Spencer is here for InsideTrackNews.com and SunsetSpeedway.ca. I'm here with the, the promoter of Sunset Speedway, Mr. Mark Dilley himself. And this, this has been a huge day, Mark. I mean, my phone's been blowing up. I'm sure your phone's been blowing up with the announcement. The NASCAR Canadian Tire Series is finally coming to Sunset Speedway. NASCAR sanctioning is coming to Sunset Speedway. I mean, this is what the people have been asking for. It's a huge day. You have to just be absolutely ecstatic with, uh, with all the work that you've put into this project to finally have it come true. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big day, obviously, for Sunset and the owners group, and I think the fans and the racers and everything. It's uh, uh, definitely, definitely been worked on for a few years, and finally all the pieces and everything fell into place, and I'm pretty excited, real excited to host the Canadian Tire Race, that's for sure. Uh, um, you know, the Leland 300 presented by Johnsonville uh, on June 20th is going to be something. Uh, I'm actually going to get to racing it myself, so it'll be kind of interesting and fun, and we're excited, and then with the addition of the NASCAR Wheeling All American Series, uh, just just kind of capped everything off, and uh, there's definitely a lot of good things that are going to come along with that. Now, obviously, you know you know Sunset the, the layout and how to drive it, like the back of your hand, and you know these cars, these these NCATS machines, like the back of your hand. Do you feel as though what we have at Sunset, the, the layout is going to breed some exciting racing uh, for the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Is, is it the type of track that, that's racing up for these cars? Oh, for sure, 100%. It's, uh, it'll be one of the best races, oval races we have, for sure. It's, you know, there's, there's a lot of great tracks that are, that are on the tour. Uh, you know, Saskatchewan and, and Andy Ganesh and uh, Shitty A. They, they, they're good racy tracks, very similar to, to what we have, where you can run side by side, wheel to wheel. And, and uh, I think it's just going to be real. That, that's going to be a real exciting event. Uh, there's no doubt. 300 laps there will be something uh, new. And one thing about when you got two or three grooves in a racetrack, you can kind of save stuff and and wait a little bit and do different things. So that's going to be a great, really, really good event. From a competitor standpoint and a fan standpoint, after losing the Mossport Oval, uh, Delaware no longer has a NASCAR event. Losing Barry, how important was it to keep another one of those Ontario Ovals on the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series schedule? I think, I think you know, obviously uh, there was a lot of talk about Cuga coming into play this year, and just all the pieces didn't fall together in the construction with that. I, I'm sure you'll see them in 2016, so I think that's going to be a strong asset. But uh, really, there's no doubt. I, I, I personally believe that it needs to have a lot of Ontario c content. I mean, it's it's great in Quebec. We got lots there, uh, but I think it needed a little one, especially earlier on in the year, to get it going on an oval for sure. Now, to talk about the Whale All American Series coming into sunset. Obviously, it's it's going to mean some changes. Uh, the 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 Facebook pages and, and everything has been alight with people wondering what this means for us in 2015. I know that we're going to have another meeting scheduled for the end of February, but what can you tell me as of right now how this is going to impact the racing program in 2015? Well, there'll be a few changes for sure as far as, uh, you know, on a nightly basis um, on the racer side. There's lots of great opportunities, uh, you know, we're just putting all the finishing touches on a lot of different things and, and we'll bring them to the meeting. As far as, uh, you know, people have to have NASCAR licenses in, in different forms and that. So that's, uh, you know, that's exciting too. There's different, lots of different bonuses that come along with doing that. It's just... Uh, you know, I think it's something, anytime you can tie your name to a NASCAR, it's the biggest name in, in our sport and one of the biggest known names in the world. Uh, when you can tie your name to it, the gains that should be uh, received from the race teams as far as in, in sponsorship and all that, anytime you can sell yourself as being in a NASCAR series or a NASCAR driver, uh, there's no doubt it, it puts the stakes up in the sponsorship game. And I, I know that firsthand from when we changed from NASCAR to NASCAR. Uh, life changed a lot as far as uh, on the on the marketing side and on the sponsorship side of things. And I think anyone who looks at it can utilize that to their benefit. And and uh, there's a lot of gains and a lot of uh, it's going to be. You're going to know you're at a NASCAR track when you roll on the Sunset Speedway. There will be NASCAR everywhere. Now, when you look at the the past Whalen All American Series champions, guys like Keith Rocco, guys like Philip Morris, Lee Pulliam. I mean, these are some of the very best short track racers in the world. In your opinion, is there a chance that we could see a Sunset regular really get up there in the standings and, and sort of rub shoulders with the elite and have a chance at a national championship? I believe so, yeah. I mean, I think that with the way the schedule will be laid out, that we'll have a, definitely have an opportunity, uh, you know, to throw a couple races out over the 18 and and uh, with the car counts we're going to have. And, you know, the, the one thing about it is it's a lot of racetracks you go to, there's two or three guys that win 
week in and week out. That's not going to be the case at our place. So we pretty well know that coming off last year and the year before. And you know, we've put up a lot of new guys in the mix, uh, you know, with Alan and, and Gordy and, and all the guys from Ricky, all the guys from Barry. That just adds a bunch more to run at the top. Uh, but I'll tell you, it will, it will be some of the wildest racing. And I, I believe that, that uh, if nothing else, I, I believe that be up in the top ten. I think you'll see someone definitely in the top ten come the end of the year and hopefully the top three. Now, for the way that we're going to set the fields every night, has has a qualifying format been determined or is that something that we're going to be discussing at the meeting at the end of February? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk with all the guys in the, in the late model uh, side of things, you know, on some of that. I, I have my ideas of how we're going to do it. Uh, you know, but we'll all sit down and talk together as a group and and uh, make it work. I mean, you know, the you know it's easy to to do it if you don't have a lot of cars. You just start from last week's finishes and all that. But we're going to have uh, more than enough cars and more than enough full fields. I think so. That's something that's got to be taken into account and uh, see what we can uh, come up with. But it, it won't be that much of a transition-wise. It's not that much of a transition. You know, they'll probably obviously. To get to that amount of races, we're going to have to run double features on most of the nights and stuff. But uh, I think that uh, I, you know, I think it'll all work out just fine. I think it's going to work out really good, actually, for a lot of people. Now, I know that for for weeks now, you've been acting as the go-between between between the NASCAR officials and the Sunset ownership group. Now that the deal is finally done and we, we get to move forward into some of the fun stuff now, what has the, the response been from the ownership group? How excited are they for 2015? Ah, oh, they're they're a stag. I mean, you know, when when they uh, when we did everything and, and basically took the track over and, and got going, that the the goal was to, to host a NASCAR event or NASCAR events and in whatever form it was and, and that day's come and uh, you know, they're excited and I mean they're excited for for myself and, and I'm excited for them. I think it's great. I'm excited for the staff. I'm excited for the fans. Uh, you know, we've, we've already started people to know that we started doing some construction last uh, two weeks ago, uh, knocking some different things down trees and making areas different and looking at different grandstand areas and just different things. I mean, it, you know, at sunset since, since we, we took it over, it's never stopped every year. There's something new that happens. Um, and this is just just another one of those things, but a, a, a very big one on on the race world side. And and uh, I think that uh, I think everybody would be real pleased when it's all said and done. One final question: uh, with the with the crowds that we're expecting for 2015 for for all of our big shows between the Oscar, the incredible NCATS event on a week to week basis to see 30 plus late models, we're going to be packing the people in. Is there a chance we're going to be looking at new ways? To maybe update the the grandstands and upgrade them to, to fit more fans in than the, than what we could accommodate in 2014. Yeah, we're definitely looking at all different angles right now, trying to figure out. You know, there wasn't so much snow, I could do more measuring in that, but definitely looking at all things. I mean, I think right now between the three split four classes, uh, I think we have 138 cars uh, registered, which obviously I got to do some pit pit uh, changing around and stuff and. <laughs> But yeah, we're looking at you know we're looking at washings, concessions, uh, stands, everything, all, all all aspects of it, you know, and that's uh, uh, something that is going to be changed. There's no doubt, and you know we already had things in the plan, and then there was things in the second phase of the plan, and the things from the second phase are now in the first phase, and and we're going ahead. But uh, no, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an exciting year. I mean, I think that. You know, we're gonna have a meeting once we get through Daytona here, right at the end of February. I'll have a date on that. I'll post that as soon as I get it on Facebook and that. It's gonna, you know, and I hate doing it because the guys have been called and girls have been called back to two or three meetings. And I, if I knew knowing this was gonna come down at the last meeting, I obviously would have held off on that meeting. But at that time, we, you know, we were really talking more along the NCAT style of stuff, uh, race with with NASCAR and didn't didn't have all the the, the Whalen All-American Series figured out what was going to happen or if it was going to happen at all and I didn't want to I didn't want to leave everybody hanging because you know there was some some split lines of what was going on and what was happening after after the closure up the street there and so I wanted to get them secured and just say hey yeah you can race here here's the rule changes and all that and kind of I mean it, it backfired a little bit I guess because this came down the road four days later, but I never, I never thought that it would by no means come come this fast at all. 
Well, Mark, I think I speak for the entire fan base when I, I thank you for all the work you put into this. I'm excited for 2015. I mean, I, I don't think there's any question that this is going to be the biggest year that, uh, that Sunset Speedway has ever had. Uh, you look, you look kind of tired. I'm gonna let you get to get some rest. I know you've been, you've been, you know, going uh, zero to 100 pretty quickly for the last uh, three weeks or so. But the deal is now done. Thank you so much for your time and uh, and all the best in 2015. Thanks. There you go, folks. Mark Dilley from Sunset International Speed.